Today, I wanna to talk to you about why I believe that family businesses are uniquely positioned to take advantage of the new roaring 2020s. Hi there, it's James Taylor here, keynote speaker on creativity, innovation, and artificial intelligence, and the founder of Speakers U. Today I want to talk to you about why I believe that family businesses are really uniquely positioned just now to take advantage of the what we call the roaring 2020s I believe that we're about to go into. We're going to see a real bursting of creativity, of innovation, of businesses really taking over new markets, entering into new areas. It's, it's going to be a really fascinating time to be in the world of work and business. And I think that family businesses are uniquely positioned for this time. And that's for a number of different reasons. The first one is a word I'm hearing all the time now from uh, boards uh, of organizations, from C-suite executives, is the word resilient, resilient resiliency. Um, this word resilient, so being able to flex, being able to deal with no matter what happens, you, you can stay resilient as that core is something that family businesses have, almost they have in their DNA. They've had to be resilient. Uh, because often you'll see, in especially these large family businesses, is they maybe have lots of different um, parts of the business that are involved in them. Maybe, they may be in different industries, multiple industries, multiple territories. Uh, one organization that I've spoken a number of times for is Family Business Network, which is an amazing network. I've spoken for them in the Middle East and also in uh, Brazil as well, in Latin America. And uh, wonderful organization, and it's really, these are people who've got these large family businesses that are members of this wonderful organization. And the thing that really impressed me was spending time with these multi-generational leaders. So you might have the grandparent who was the president of the organization, you might have the, then the next generation was the current CEO or CTO, and then you might have the younger generations after that, it was the managers, or maybe even grandchildren who are just kind of coming up as apprentices and trainees in the organizations. And when I talk to those organizations, and the, especially the older generations in them, they tell me the stories of resilience, how something happened. They've seen multiple market crashes, multiple recessions, all kinds of things that have happened. And they talk about this idea about staying resilient. So I think there's a lot that more publicly traded and more traditional kind of corporate companies can learn from family businesses about staying resilient. But the other part is agility. So this is being uh, light of foot, fleet of foot, as we sometimes say. Uh, and being able to spot opportunities and take advantage of those opportunities. Don't wait all the time for lots and lots of research and data. Sometimes just kind of go, when you spot that opportunity, kind of go for it. So there's an opportunistic side as well. Now you can't build a, a, a strategy of a large business on just being opportunistic. You have to have something wider than that, but there are times that being opportunistic can be very, very uh, useful for you and, and very, very successful for you. So as I was talking to these organizations, it, it was also reminding me of, there's a great TV show just now called Succession with a Scottish actor called Brian Cox, who's the, the leader of this kind of father of this family business. And uh, it's all the machinations that are going on in this kind of family business. And it was interesting just watching that because I was seeing some of the same dynamics, albeit dr dram dramatized in it as well, that I saw with some of those family businesses in uh, Latin America and in the Middle East as well. But one of the things that really impressed me, and I always wondered why it was, was their ability to be agile and to take decisions uh, quickly. And I was talking the other day to Professor Gerd Gigerenza from the Max Planck Institute in Berlin. Uh, Professor Gigerenza is like an expert on heuristics and decision making. Often a lot of large companies will bring him in to talk about how to make better decisions in their organizations. He wrote a wonderful book called Risk Savvy that I highly encourage you to check out. And we were talking about what holds a lot of organizations back, larger organizations. And he, he mentioned this phrase which is called defensive decision making. And what this defensive decision making means is that sometimes that CEO in the organization, that senior leader in a more traditional organization, will um, they'll have a hunch, they'll have a gut feeling, intuition. This is the right strategy we should be going after. There's this opportunity here, we should be going for it. But then what they have to do 
because they have to go through this whole process of bringing in external consultants who bring in 100 page you know, document PowerPoints and you have to go through masses and masses of research. And sometimes by that, you've gone through that process, you've kind of lost the opportunity or you've, some of the, the drive has gone out for it. But often usually what happens is it just kind of comes back and they just go ahead with the decision they were gonna make anyway. And I think what we find often in family businesses is they, there's nowhere to hide for them. It's not like they're gonna go out often to an external consultant, bring an external consultant. They're decision makers in the room. And often there's family board, there's board meetings, they might have external directors as well to provide a different uh, perspective on things. But there's an institutional knowledge. There's almost like a, a DNA, a family, a culture within that organization. Um, and there's an experience in an organization that you often don't find in other types of organizations as well, which is why they're so powerful. So they don't go often down this uh, defensive decision making. They'll make it this, they'll, they'll come up with a, this is where we should be going. They'll explain it to the rest of the, the family members in the organization. There'll be some questions and they're like, okay, let's execute. Let's go for it. Or let's create that pilot, for example. There's not so, so much of the defensive decision making that Professor Giga Renza often talks about. So this is why this time that we're going into just now, these new roaring 2020s, as they say, this post pandemic era that we're hopefully gonna be coming into, is so, holds so much potential for family businesses because they're not held back by that defensive decision making. There's gonna be so many opportunities in this time for businesses to grow, to move into new fields, into new areas, into new industries, into new countries, into new territories. This is gonna be a golden age for family businesses. My name is James Taylor. I would love your comments and your feedback on whether you agree with me that this is gonna be a golden age for family businesses. Just leave a message down below. Maybe you've got a family business, you've started a family business, you're a member of a family business. Do you believe that these next few years are gonna be a golden time for your organization? Leave those comments below.